let me describe this environment a little bit. Uh, first of all, what you're seeing on the screen is what we call our visualizer. It's important to know this is for setup purposes only. This is not a customer facing application. In other words, you would never use this particular screen as a part of your day to day business operations. But this screen represents the data feed that we provide through standard APIs. And we'll go through a little bit of that uh, shortly uh, so you get an idea as to how we interface with uh, middleware and uh, end user in store um, applications. Let me describe the building a little bit that you're looking at. This is a 36 by 37 foot facility. We reference speed, uh, we're in the United States. Um, and uh, the, the, there are currently two antennas in the space. Uh, each one is horizontally mounted looking down. Uh, that's what these red boxes are. And these are, antennas are mounted at 10 feet, eight inches off of the floor. And they encompass an area of, uh, they're 19 feet apart from one another. The rectangles that you see uh, with the uh, labels, office, automated point of sale, dressing room, uh, these are user-defined virtual zones that you can use to carve up uh, the API data and how it presents itself to your end user applications. Uh, your retail stores could all be a single zone or you can have as many zones as you want. Uh, it's important to note that each of these zones is individually user definable. So as long as it's a rectangle or a square, uh, we don't support circular zones, uh, but they are uh, customizable uh, to, your, uh, to your use case. So what we're gonna demonstrate today is uh, three things really, speed, distance, and accuracy. When you look at our approach to uh, retail passive RTLS, real-time location system, it's all about those three components, speed, distance, and accuracy. What we have to be able to do in order to deliver the kind of experience we want to demonstrate this evening is the speed by which we can determine the location of a tag. It's a critical part of our uh, business product. Uh, the distance, as Zach mentioned, we perform uh, very well in high ceiling environments uh, and high ceiling environments actually provide a lower cost per square foot. So the higher the ceiling that we can play in, uh, the better performance in terms of, of, a, of an ROI we can, we can deliver. So speed, distance, and then the final one is accuracy. And we're going to uh, focus uh, a great deal on accuracy this evening or this morning, uh, because ultimately it is the accuracy of our ability to know where tags are that provides the greatest ROI to the end user customer. So uh, before I get uh, too far into this demonstration, I do want to point out that this particular green dot, number 21C, if you look at the last three digits, that is actually me. That is my headset. So as I move around the space, and I'll do a little bit of that right now, uh, that dot will move and follow my whereabouts. So you'll be able to monitor and see real time uh, how it is that I'm doing this demonstration. So I'll turn that black box off, but I did want to point that out. Okay, so there's a few use cases that, that we want to uh, talk about. So switching over to the API just for a moment, I wanted to showcase a few things. If you look at the top of the screen where it says total tag count, we currently have 400 tags in the, in the environment. Uh, so it's important to note this is not uh, just a dozen tags. Uh, I'll switch back to the visualizer. Most of the tags are aggregated in the back of the store, or uh, what we call our storeroom. Uh, we do have a metal rack of uh, shoes. We have uh, one item in men's apparel, and we have a couple of items in a dressing room. Now, what I'm going to begin by doing is introducing new tags to the environment. And again, I'm gonna switch back to our visualizer mode for a moment to where you can watch uh, me bring the tags in. And what I'm going to do is introduce 25 tags at a time to the environment. So you should be seeing a number of red dots on your screen 
This is 25 RFID tagged items simulated that we've just brought into our store and placed into our back storage area room. And in a moment, we'll show you what that has done to the, uh, the tag count on the total screen. So the red dot are tags that are uh, identified as being uh, as moving, and the green dots are tags that uh, we've determined the location of the tag itself. So if we go look at our tag count now, uh, we're up to 444 tags that are in the environment. We'll bring additional tags in. And you'll see the red tags, uh, or actually you won't. Let me flip back to that for a moment. So this is another large group of tags we're introducing into the space and we're transi transitioning to the back of the store. And those tags will show as red as they're moving, and then when they settle down into the location, they will show back as being green. And then in just a moment, you'll see me reappear in the auto point of sale area. So our tag count now should be right at 450 tags, and it is. So that demonstrates the speed by which we can bring new tags into the environment and note that those tags are all are positioned back in the storeroom area. So tag density is not a problem for us. Again, each of these tag blinks that you see is a location cal calculation for that specific tag in that specific second, so that brief moment of time. Uh, the importance of this, the speed by which we do things is what's so critical in a retail RTLS environment. And I'm gonna demonstrate that very quickly by showing you, if you look at the green dot for a moment under auto point of sale, I'm going to place my hand over my head and block the tag, and in about five seconds, that green dot will disappear. Now, <laughs> that's not the demonstration. The demonstration is how fast we get the dot to reappear and determine its exact location. So I'm gonna count it down, three, two, one, now. And when I take my hand off, you see that the green dot is there. And it's not just that the green dot is there, the green dot is exactly where it's supposed to be. So the whole key to a passive RTLS system is you're never going to be able to see 100% of the of tags 100% of the time. So what you want to be able to do is to very quickly take every opportunity you can to see a tag. So if you look on this particular screen, my head uh, gear that I'm wearing has been seen 16,000 times in uh, about the last four or five hours. It's that kind of sweep scan that we do that keeps the accuracy of our system uh, always up to date and current. Now, a few other use cases that I wanted to demonstrate. Uh, the first of which is the speed by which, again, we can move uh, tags. But in this case, uh, what I want to demonstrate is how we can track items in a shopping cart as, as a person moves around a store. So I'm gonna click on me for a moment, and I'm gonna go and get a plastic basket of approximately a half a dozen items. And what you're gonna see is that black box will move around but with it will become about a half a dozen tags that I'll move to the point of sale area. And when I, so what I've demonstrated is our system was able to track me as I moved through the store with these items in the shopping cart. So I'll turn off my tag so it's easy to see. And you'll see that we have uh, five, six items in the area. And if we count the cart, we have one, two, three, four, five items, plus me, the red dot would make it six. I'll now transition these back to the store shelf. So that is how we can accurately uh, track the movement of, of goods within your store 
and associate those goods to a particular shopper. The next thing I want to demonstrate is the accuracy. So this particular item in men's apparel uh, is, a, is a shirt. And what I'm going to do is for a moment, I'm going to go back to our API and show that in men's apparel, we have this particular uh, shirt, 67800004028. And what I want to demonstrate here is location accuracy. So we give you X and Y location 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This particular shirt, uh, we've been looking at it and watching it, uh, and it's, uh, we've seen it, uh, looks like about 5,000 times uh, recently. So uh, we're gonna come back to this XYZ location. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna manually measure the X and Y location of this particular tag. So this is me again. So I'll take my laser finder and go over, and the X coordinate should be approximately 23 and a half feet, and the Y component should be, uh, just call it 18 and a half feet, maybe not quite that much. And we claim about 18 inch accuracy on a smooth basis. So let's see how we did. If we go back and look at our item, we're showing a 22 foot X, where I was showing 23 and a half, and at Y, we're showing 18.88, uh, where I was showing 18.5. So that gives you an idea as to the accuracy of being able to find things in a store very quickly. And you'll notice that our tag count remains 450. Another item that I want to show, another business use case for retail, is buy online, pick, pick up in store. Buy online, pick up in store is obviously a labor intensive process and one that uh, uh, the people who uh, manage that uh, as accurately as possible are the ones that are going to uh, achieve the highest ROI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter a particular customer's uh, pur uh, purchase order. So they went online, they placed an order of, uh, let's say, you know, half a dozen or so items, and we want to go around and we want to methodically and accurately find those items and take them to our point of sale. So I'm going to filter these tags based on a prefix of 3034. You would do this, of course, in your end user app. This is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to take a subset of these tags, and this is what my customer ordered. This is me, of course. And you notice how accurate this system is. I always know where I'm at because the accuracy of where I'm standing. So these are the tags that are on this customer's order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm gonna begin picking the items that this customer ordered and bring them to the point of sale area. And I'll do it methodically and as efficiently as I can. So right now I'll click my myself off so we can see what it is that we're doing. So we've got our items in the point of sale. Ah, but we noticed something. We've got a couple of items in our dressing room that are a part of this customer's order. So we'll go into our dressing room, which we would have not necessarily looked for them in there, and we will pull those shoes and add them to our point of sale. And that leaves just one item left down in our storeroom that we'll need to go retrieve. And I'll illuminate that one and go get it. It actually is a pair of socks. When you can create an internet-enabled device from a pair of socks, that's when you've got a retail application that's speaking with you. So just that quickly, I pulled this entire customer's order and it brought it to the point of sale. And in each step of the way, I knew exactly where the item was, but equally important, I knew that the item was indeed there.
And that is where much of the time savings come as you're going around and trying to pick items from shelves. The number one priority is that the items be on the shelves where you expect to find them. And to just make clear, all the other tags are still in our environment. So now I'll return these items to the shelf and we'll see that our point of sale will very quickly clear itself out. And the predictable nature of this technology, gentlemen, is what's so extraordinary. With your experience with RFID, I trust that you're seeing a level of performance that you've probably not seen before.